And this function exists and doesn't go to infinity for everywhere in the finite complex plane. As long as S doesn't become infinite. Okay, so you can say that the Laplace transform exists everywhere on the complex plane. Okay, or the region of convergence is everywhere on the complex plane too. This thing will only diverge if S goes to, say, uh, minus infinity. Then this becomes infinitely large. But on the finite part of the complex plane, this is always well defined. Okay? What about. Uh, About, uh, we can do example 11.4. Okay, what is the what about the Laplace transform of the other prime? Okay, what should the Laplace transform of the other prime be? Well, we can do it a number of ways. Um, we can say that um, You can actually find the Laplace transform by integrating delta prime of t e to the minus s t dt. Okay? And then, uh, in order to integrate with the delta prime, you can do integration by parts. Okay? There are many ways to do this problem. Okay? One way is to do integration by parts. So if you integrate by parts, you integrate delta prime, you get delta t, e to the minus s t, you get 0 minus 2 infinity. Okay? And then, um, in integration by parts, after having integrated this, you have to differentiate this thing, e to the minus s t. You differentiate this with respect to t, you get minus s out front. Okay, and then you integrate 0 minus to infinity or 0 minus infinity dt. Okay? So the first one evaluates to 0. Evaluates to 0 because the other t is always 0 outside. t is equal to 0. The second one, so this is always equal to 0. The second one, you can use the sifting property of the delta function so it evaluates to something like plus s. And then this been evaluating to 1, right? Just as we had before. This thing evaluates to 1. So the Laplace transform of delta prime t is this is Laplace transform. Okay, if this is the impulse response, the Laplace transform of delta prime t is just s. Okay, or you can say that delta prime t Laplace transform to s. Okay. So, this thing has no pole on the finite part of the complex plane. You can say that the region of convergence is everywhere on the finite <coughs> part of the complex plane. But you can also take another viewpoint, that it goes to infinity. When S goes to infinity, that it has a pole. It has a pole. At infinity. Okay, depending on what viewpoint you take, you can say that it has a pole at infinity. It comes to be very important when you do stability analysis. Okay, another thing that you want to note is that. Uh, in terms of Bible stability, <coughs> we say that if h of t is absolutely integrable, it implies Bible stability. But this thing also implies something. 
This thing implies Bible stability, but what else does it imply? Do you remember? Absolute integrability implies something else before you learn about Bible stability. Is Fourier transform exit? It means that uh, h of omega exists. And what does it mean by h of omega exists? It also means that h of omega is finite. Okay, it does not go to infinity, which means that if you were to perform this integration, this integration always gives you a finite number on the left hand side. What it means is that if something is Bible stable, okay, so the Laplace transform is a generalization of the Fourier transform. Okay, the Laplace transform is a generalization of the Fourier transform. Fourier transform is defined only on this line, on the line where sigma is good at zero. Okay. In order for h of omega to be finite, it can never, never have a pole on this line. Okay, it can never, never have a pole which means that h of omega has to belong to the regions of convergence to the right of the pole. So the pole of the system has to be somewhere like this, for instance. And if the pole of the system is somewhere like this, then the ROC is something like this. If the ROC is something like this, it means that h hat of x exists on ROC. It actually, we went through many exercises and say that if we define a S to be of certain value, then the Laplace transform exists and can be found, and the region of convergence has to contain the ray axis. And if the, not the ray axis, sorry, the imaginary axis. If the region of convergence contains the imaginary axis, the Fourier transform must exist. If the Fourier transform exists, the impulse response is absolutely integrable. Okay, if the impulse response is absolutely integrable, it implies that the system is Bible stable. Okay, so for a system to be Bible stable, all poles have to be to the left of the imaginary axis, so on the left half plane. Okay. This is usually called the left half plane. All poles have to be to the, on the left half plane in order for the system to be LIGO stable. You want me to repeat this or is this clear? Okay, let me recapitulate this. We learned this to be true. Okay. This implies LIGO stability. We also learned that this is a prerequisite for Fourier transform of this function to exist. Okay. If this is true, this is true, this is also true. When this is true, it means that this is finite, which means that if you were to perform this Fourier transform integral, it came up with a function that is never infinity and finite. But in order for h of omega to be finite, h of omega, as you can see, is a special case of the Laplace transform where s is equal to j omega. So you go to the Laplace transform plane and say that j omega is just the imaginary axis. If the region of convergence contains the imaginary axis, all values of Laplace transform is finite and exist in this region of convergence. So it includes the imaginary axis. So it includes the imaginary axis, this must exist. If this exists, the system is Bible stable. So in order for the ROC to contain the imaginary axis, all poles have to be on the left half plane. Okay, is this clear? Okay? So, if this is clear, that's very good. Then uh, there are several examples in the textbook that um, you can go and test for your Bible stability. 
Um, and there might be a, an interesting example. There are many, many examples in this chapter. I, I don't know if I have time to go through all of them. So this one is something like G of T is the rec of T minus half. Okay? And then you can find this Laplace transform. It turns out that the Laplace transform is 1 over that. Does this really have a pole at the origin? No. Okay, what is the pole at the origin called? What kind of singularity is this? It is? Have you learned any courses in complex variables? This is called a removable singularity. The pole is not there. Because when s is equal to 0, this is also 1, this is 1. It's 1 minus 1 is 0 over 0. Okay, the way to evaluate this is to use Laplace's rule. Another way is to use the Taylor series expansion that this is minus or plus s squared over 2 factorial plus this, and then this is just 1 minus s approximately. If you substitute in this approximation, this is 1 minus 1 plus s over s is equal to 1, with s tends to 0. So this pole is a fictitious pole. It's called a, remo a removable singularity in complex variable. It can be removed by just using Taylor series expansion or using Laplace rule. I believe there's a hat over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Laplace rule. All hats. 